Death Valley can be one of the hottest and driest places on the planet. So you can imagine my surprise when I woke to a blanket of thick fog. But this wasn't ordinary fog. The water droplets were unusually large and the fog seemed especially dense. I was sharing a campsite with Thomas Heaton and as we gathered our gear for the day, he suggested that this had the telltale signs of a cloud inversion. With that in mind, I decided to drive to Dante's View, which sits at over 5,000 feet in elevation and offers an expansive view across the valley towards Telescope Peak, which rises to 11,000 feet. The fog was especially thick near the Furnace Creek Inn and began to burn off as I approached the turnoff for Zabriskie Point. This meant that the layer of fog was several hundred feet deep and hugging the floor of the valley. As I made my way up the mountain, I noticed a glimpse of high clouds. The stage was set for a beautiful sunrise. The only challenge was having to set up my camera in the dark. This is incredibly difficult to do since the ground glass is so hard to see before sunrise. It's tough to see if the focus is correct or how well the composition works. But the wind was very calm and I already knew a good vantage point to shoot from, so I was willing to give it a shot. Well, this is gonna be interesting. It's quite a ways before sunrise. And uh, came up here to Dante's view. And we got a bit of a inversion down there. All kinds of clouds set up. And I'm gonna attempt to set my camera up in the dark. Let's see how that goes. Well, it was a little after sunrise, and uh, I made my mad dash up here, set the camera in the dark, which is something I never really like doing because I don't really see all the you know, details about the composition. How's the foreground gonna interact with the background? This down here, all these mountains here, this is a foreground. It was just a dark blob when I was setting it up, and I don't even know how much in focus it is. I know that I'm in focus on the mountains, but I did expose uh, two sheets of Provia 100 before the sun came up, and I went with Provia just because I could do uh, long exposures without doing the reciprocity and I think it'd do pretty well for that But then the uh, sun started hitting the peak. I did a little bit of Velvia and also I did some Velvia uh, Before that as well. So it's kind of a mad dash to get up here expose some film, but I'm feeling good about this I, I have no clue what to think about the composition, but at least I'm feeling pretty good about getting out here set up a shot not getting rained on and uh, I figure I'll stick around a little while longer see what happens see if the uh, See what happens as the sun starts hitting the mountains a little lower, maybe some black and white, we'll see. But these are unique conditions and it's a pretty special moment. So it is quite a while after sunrise and I have shot every single sheet of film I have with me. It's a constantly changing scene, which is pretty cool. I mean, there was the glow before sunrise and then there was that moment when just the, the light hit the peak of Telescope Peak. And uh, then it got a little kind of dull for a while, but now it's beautiful to begin because we have some more high clouds that are streaming in. You got the inversion in place. I mean, it, it's such a beautiful scene. Um, I just shot a sheet of black and white vertical composition and uh, sort of that mountain down there, kind of a pyramid shaped mountain in the background, the inversion and the mountains and the clouds up there. And totally experimental, but we'll see how that turns out. Another thing too, uh, which is pretty special is that uh, I was joined this morning by Thomas Heaton. So uh, he was up kind of over the hill shooting a panorama and uh, it'd be really cool to see what he comes away with because you know two photographers in the same location shooting the same general thing, it's gonna turn out different. And uh, so I, I have a ton of respect for him as a photographer. Beautiful, beautiful work. And uh, so I'm really looking forward to, to seeing how his photos turn out as well. He's actually up on that peak up over there uh, shooting some black and whites hopefully, so. This is a pretty special morning. Uh, there's only a handful of other people that came up here, and uh, I think this was by far the best place to be in the park this morning. Now it's a matter of trying to figure out what I'm gonna do for the rest of the day. I, I got some ideas as far as uh, you know, kind of a sunset sort of photo, but we'll see what happens with this inversion and, and how long it takes to clear, and if it clears, we'll see. But uh, definitely a, a pretty special morning here up at uh, Dante's View. Thank you.
mid afternoon now and uh, took a few hours at midday just to kind of you know, load some film, grab some lunch and uh, kind of come up with a plan for what we're gonna do with the rest of the day. And it was so awesome to be up above the clouds this morning and to um, you know, take those photos up there and hopefully they, they turned out pretty decent. Uh, but most of those clouds have now burnt off and there's just a few of them kind of hanging out around here, but there's abundant sunshine down here in the valley now. And uh, I returned to an area that I was scattering out yesterday. This is an area I tried to set up a photo yesterday uh, when it was raining at the time and there were some rain clouds kind of flirting with the mountains there. And I saw this really cool foreground here with these sort of yellow, green and sort of rust colored bushes set against this really kind of dark, neutral uh, soil, which has been saturated by the rain. And uh, I really liked the look of it, but I really had a hard time finding a composition. And when I finally did, you know, the clouds cleared out. I just didn't really have the light that I was going for. But now that I know about this location, I've returned to it, uh, which kind of shows the value of, you know, returning to a location and spending time scouting. And uh, I've got a composition set up that I like better than I had yesterday because I have more time to sort of plan it out. And uh, I got these bushes here kind of in the foreground and there's kind of a diagonal formed by these bushes leading off. It kind of plays nicely with the diagonal from the mountains. I'm using a, a wide angle lens. And my goal for this photo is to shoot it when the foreground's in shade, whether it is from a cloud put in the foreground in shade or as the sun is setting to have the foreground in shade and have some really nice light on those mountains. Probably use a grad filter. And so now that I found my composition, I'm just gonna hang out and see what happens to the light. And this is the sort of Death Valley that, that I love to shoot where you can you know, plan out your shots and, and take your time and um, not really rush around and scramble around and chase the light. So we'll see what happens. So as I'm waiting for the light to do what I hopefully want to do, I came over here to this nearby alluvial fan and it's just so impressive to see all these rocks that came down from those mountains there. Usually in very dramatic, you know, flash floods, or just moving all these rocks and stones. And from a distance, it just looks like these sort of, you know, brown or gray or tan, just kind of areas of sediment and soil. But once you get up in here, you see that these rocks are huge. I mean, it's literally just paved with these big, big rocks. It looks really cool, actually. Really chaotic, but makes me think that there might be some sort of composition here. They're all so uniform and it forms all these great patterns. Such a harsh, harsh place. So now that I'm just trying to kill some time, and uh, wait for some decent evening light. I wanna take a moment to talk about the experience of yesterday versus the experience of this morning. And yesterday was incredibly frustrating to be able to you know, see so many beautiful scenes but not really be able to capture them. And I mean, I feel so slow when working with the camera and you see something great, you just wanna be able to you know, capture that photo but it takes so long to set up. And, and it can be incredibly frustrating to be surrounded by so much stuff, but just not really be able to do anything with it. And to be honest, I really had a hard time falling asleep last night because I was just thinking about, you know, you know why am I here if I'm not able to take advantage of these beautiful conditions and kind of rethinking, you know, should I be doing something different? Should I have some sort of different approach? But then there's times like this morning, this morning when the, the conditions were very unique and you know, the idea of going up to Dante's view to get a, a look over the whole thing when it was really foggy at the campsite in the morning turned out to be a good decision. It was a good instinct. And hopefully that photo turned out and it's just calm and peaceful up there. And that is what I really love about landscape photography. I hate scrambling around. I hate chasing the light, but I love finding compositions. I love witnessing great light. And so the, com I mean, basically contrast between yesterday and today, it's pretty, it's pretty dramatic. And, and today, I mean, that's the sort of days that I, I really, really love where I'm able to kind of hopefully make those exposures. So I just wanted to basically say that not every day is gonna be some sort of glorious day where everything works right. There's, it's so much work out here. It's, it's so easy to forget that once I get back home, um, you know, editing the videos, editing the photos, but 
There's so much time spent out here, there's so much work, but it really is rewarding when those moments really do come together. And uh, hopefully this morning was one of those. And we'll see what happens, you know, this evening. Hopefully I'll get some good light and hopefully the composition works out pretty well. And it'd be pretty awesome to expose, you know, some photos of, of a couple different subjects in one day, especially subjects that look so different from each other. But we'll see what happens with the light, but I got a few more hours to kill here. So I'm probably gonna keep wandering around and looking at more rocks. So after having my little wander amongst the rocks, I came back here to my camera and I've had sort of a change of heart with regard to the composition. When I looked at it again, it just wasn't really showing things the way that I wanted it to. So I moved the camera about 15 feet. Now I'm showing a different clump of uh, bushes here. And I think these ones kind of fill the frame better. I think they interact better. And one of them kind of mimics the slope of the mountain, which is pretty nice. But also I'm able to angle the camera a little bit differently so that the mountains, I think, look more like mountains instead of just a line that kind of drops in the background. And hopefully it shows the scale of things a little bit better. I placed a grad filter ahead of time for when hopefully those mountains light up. But I got another hour or so until sunset, and I'm hoping we we'll get some good light. It is so absolutely quiet here. It kind of makes your ears ring. It's, it's a difficult thing to describe because I think in our daily life, there's just so much of everything going on, just you know, radio, TV, podcasts, YouTube videos. You're always kind of filling your ear with noise, but down here, it's just quiet, so quiet. As the afternoon has sort of progressed, there's some high clouds over there to the north, and there's a lot more down over here to the south. And these are the clouds that will probably uh, light up quite nice at sunset, but I'm not, too, uh, I'm not too worried about that. I know it's gonna be a beautiful show over there, but I think I'm gonna stick with my composition. You see back behind me there, and uh, I think it's a pretty good composition. I think it's something I'm, I'm pretty happy with. And I think that those, those mountains there, if they get some nice kind of evening light on them, I think it'll be pretty dramatic, especially when you kind of mix it with the foreground. So it's nice not to chase the light. I like to just kind of sit back, find a shot and see what happens with the light. And typically it works out pretty well. It's so beautiful here, so quiet, so calm. Really looking forward to seeing what happens this evening. My primary objective on these trips is photography. There are times when the light changes so fast and I struggle to keep up. So I set my video camera aside and concentrate on taking photos. This was certainly one of those evenings. The light worked its way up the mountain very quickly. And even though I exposed three sheets of film, I was convinced that somehow I had missed the best light. I started with a safety sheet of Velvia 50 before the light was at its best, followed by a sheet of Akdar 100, and finally one last sheet of Velvia 50. I honestly didn't know what to think when I broke down my camera that evening. I felt like I was too slow to respond and that I had missed the best light. I was operating on instinct, but that has seldom steered me wrong. As it turns out, it was a second photo, the one on Akdar 100, that captured the best light. The foreground was mostly in shade and the last rays of sunlight were racing up the mountain in the background. This just goes to show how important it is to find your subject and fine tune your composition well ahead of the light. The photo I took that evening was a truly fleeting moment, though it certainly wasn't as rare as the inversion I shot that morning. I'm happy to say that my sunrise photos from the inversion turned out just fine. My favorite was taken well before sunrise in the blue hour on Provia 100. All the elements were nicely balanced and the cloud inversion reflected some wonderfully soft morning light. The photos later that morning were also fine, but in some ways, the fiery clouds at sunrise distracted from the inversion in the valley below. Overall, it was a very productive day and one they'll certainly remember for a very long time. ad-free content and want to help me live my dream.
voluntary contribution of just $24 a year helps keep my gas tank full and my film freezer stocked. For more information on how to support me and my work, please visit the donations section of my website at benhorn.com donate. I also have prints in my 2017 portfolio box set available on my website. You can find a direct link down below in the show notes. Thanks in advance for your support.